Hello out there, and welcome to my channel. My name is Milesy, and I apologize for the quality of the sound in this video. Hopefully it doesn't sound too garbage, but ordinarily when I record these, I use my phone to capture my audio, and then I splice them all together. But I'm not doing that today because I want to show you how to do something with your phone. And what I want to show you is how to take pictures of a glow-in-the-dark project. Now, I've had this guy up for about a year, a little bit more. Finished him a while ago, and what most people don't really realize is that his skeleton glows in the dark. Because I don't have a good picture of it, for some reason I've never taken a good one. But it is actually really easy to get a good picture of a glow-in-the-dark piece with glow-in-the-dark floss, black light floss, anything. And all you need are a good camera, Ordinarily, I will use a DSLR, but most smartphones these days have pretty decent cameras on them. So I will show you how to use your iPhone, your Android, whatever you need. I have an iPhone, so that's what I'm using. You also need a black light. Just a simple little light that can fit into any standard lamp is all we need. You need this big scary thing. It's a tripod clamp and the adapter for the tripod clamp that will go on a tripod which the camera is currently on right now because this one won't fit on the other tripod so that's going to be interesting but you can get every single one of these for under ten dollars uh, most of them you probably already have around like a phone and most people have a tripod sitting around that they never use and if you don't you can always go to a thrift store find one pretty cheap that's where i got both of mine and also handy is a remote shutter release, which in the case of the iPhone, is your headphones. That's all we need that came with the phone. I don't know if Android has a similar functionality, it probably does, but with the iPhone, the volume buttons control the shutter, so the volume buttons on your headphone will also control the shutter. So that's what we're going to use, and I'm going to get that set up really quickly. Okay, so I am behind the camera right now, so I might sound a little bit different. Over on this side of the camera, right here, I have my black light lamp, which is aimed right at the piece. Behind me, I still have one white light on so that you can see a little bit of how I have this set up. Ooh, there we go. And I have no special settings on my phone right now. It's just set up to take a picture on photo. I'm not zoomed in. We want to make sure that the flash is off. We can turn the HDR on or off, it doesn't matter. We're not going to be using that either way. We don't need a timer, we don't need to fiddle with any of the other settings. And just to make it a little bit easier on the picture, we'll put it in square mode. I don't know if you could see that. That'll just make it to where it doesn't get confused by the other colors behind it. So I'm going to really quickly go ahead and, oops, turn off my light, because we don't need this one. And right now what we have is a whole bunch of white and we have the Sponsor Eagles skeleton actually showing up pretty decently. For the most part though we can only really see the white, but let's take a picture. And there we go, and we'll just take a couple just for good measure. And then what I'm going to do is take this and just really darken it quite a lot here. There we go. And we'll take one that's been darkened. That's all we want to do for out here. Let's do one more, because it looks like it's actually finally caught up with what I was trying to do. Bat. So we have a whole bunch of photos now. I'm going to jump over to the computer to show you how to fix these up. Okay, so now I have emailed myself the photos, and I'm just going to take a look and see if any of them look like they're going to be what I want them to be, and it looks like probably that last one I took is exactly the one that we need. So I'm just going to drop this into here, if it'll let me. Yep, there we go. And let's zoom in and take a look here. And ordinarily, I would do this in Photoshop, but again, I'm showing you how to do this the easiest way you can do this, so I'm using paint.net. And what we're going to do is auto levels. Sometimes it helps, half the time it does something like this. So there we go. So actually what we're going to go ahead and do is go to curves. 
And we're just going to stay on luminos luminosity and we're going to brighten up the skeletal bits as much as we can. And just kind of fiddle with this until it looks nice. There we go. That will work. So now we have this all brightened up, but we don't want the rest of it. We just want the skeleton, which is fine, actually, because we can come here and just point sample that with the little eyedropper tool. And then we're going to get this, drop the hardness down to about there, and the size up to enormous. Not that enormous. Why is that even bigger? Okay. There we go. That's what we wanted. And we're just going to kind of paint out everything we don't want. And I'm not even using my tablet. I am super lazy. Oops, I am using my mouse. And we're using the soft brush just... Why? Did, why? Why? Just so that it doesn't really mess up too much stuff, but we can go through on these fiddly bits and... There we go. Grab that. But for the most part, I want it to be fairly soft, just so that you don't see where we've stopped using it so much. And I don't know why Paint.net has decided that it needs to send me to the moon every time I move my cursor. That's new. And then we're going to bring up the hardness a little bit and bring this eyes down for these really fiddly bits down here by his wings and by his back. And let's zoom in a tiny bit. Now this is getting a slightly different sort of look because the shading isn't actually... I want that really hard now. The shading isn't actually uh, glow-in-the-dark. I only use glow-in-the-dark for the bits that are really highlighted. Would love to know why it's doing that. But in this case, it kind of works. Most people aren't going to be using glow-in-the-dark thread on something super intricate. But you do whatever you want to do. That is what it's for. And... A little bit bigger. 15. And then we're going to drop this down. To get rid of that pumpkin without it seeming like we're getting rid of the pumpkin. And that can be a little bit bigger now while we go in next to the wing. That's weird. And it's just kind of going to be a game of playing with your brush size and the brush hardness. Because we just want to get rid of... That went the wrong way. We just want to get rid of all of the bits that don't actually glow in the dark. We don't need those bits. They are not important to us. We just want the skeleton. So... Here we go. Uh, make that a little bit smaller. There we go. Perfect. And just get these fiddly bits. And again, I'm not even bothering to use my tablet. I could. It's right here. I even have the stylus for it. I'm looking at it, but not everybody's going to have one, so I just want to show you that you can do it even without these things. So let's drop down the hardness, bring that up, and smooth out his beak so it doesn't look like we're erasing a bunch of stuff. And we're gonna make that really big now. There we go. Perfect. Because the stitches aren't going to be perfect. There are going to be some bits that are a little bit more under the fabric than on top. Etc. 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 And now we are just going to go into the brightness and contrast. We want this to be a little bit brighter. 
but a lot more contrasty. About there. And that'll really get rid of anything that shouldn't be there. There we go. And then we're just going to select... I guess we're going to zoom out because it's being a dick. There we go. And if you hold down shift while you are selecting, you will get a perfect square. And then we can move that around with not that tool, apparently this tool. There we go. Move that around to center him. Come up here and hit crop. And there we go. There is our glow-in-the-dark eagle, all of the bits of him that look glow-in-the-dark. You can't see the pumpkin, you can't see any of his feathers, there's no more background, it's just the glow-in-the-dark parts. So I hope you guys found this helpful. I've seen some questions about this stuff lately, which is why I wanted to go ahead and do a quick video on it. So if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below and I will get to them as soon as I can. But thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff. Make sure you check me out on social media and check out the links down in the description below and I will see you next time. Bye! Thank you for watching. If you would like to support future videos and get some neat stuff in return, please head over to my Patreon page. Your support means a lot to me and goes a long way. If you're not in a position to donate, consider sharing this video with your friends to help this channel grow. Otherwise, please enjoy this goat.